Hey t heads, this is Don from Mayleaf and in this video I'm going to be giving you a little behind the scenes peek at the thinking and process to make this cake here, the Fractal Fate Finder, Puerti and the Fractal Safari game. I also wanted to highlight the meaning of this cake but I realized that the meaning of this cake and what it represents to me is actually much more involved and so I'm going to dedicate a whole video to talk about this around Chinese New Year, so around the beginning of February. But a simple version is that the Fractal Fate Finder, this ostrich here, is on a quest to find truth. The fractal up here represents truth, a singular object but made up of parts and as you zoom in or out at infinite levels of magnification, the object is self-repeating, the, the parts are similar to the whole. It suggests that when you find absolute truth, it is an incorruptible pattern which repeats no matter where your position or point of view. Fractal comes from the Latin for fractured and for me this represents truth as being made up of seemingly incongruous and separate parts which are in fact necessary to make up the whole. We are living in a more fractured world than I can ever remember and my hope is that we will all realize that just like truth, these fractured parts are all one and the same truth of human civilization. And by realizing this, I hope that we'll be less occupied with warring with each other and there'll be less tribalism in the world and we'll be more tolerant, enlightened and wise in our actions. The fractal is a reminder that the truth is not owned by the single parts, but in the whole and that the only way to test if you're looking at the whole truth is by zooming in or out, dive deeper to find the truth in the detail and then rise higher to see the patterns and connections which are at play. In order to do this you need to disassociate with tribes and allow yourself to be tolerant to and actively seek out other views. All opinions and scientific consensus should welcome challenge and scrutiny and we should all be happy to change our minds. In fact, changing your mind is one of the most confident things that you can do. The ostrich was chosen because of its mythical habit of burying its head in the sand to avoid difficult situations and uh, to refuse to take responsibility. This ostrich has pulled its head out of the sand to find truth and I hope that this tea will encourage all of us to follow. So this was the thinking behind the Fractal Fate Finder or at least what it developed into because at the beginning I just wanted to make another Gu Shu Sheng Pua to roast in London as a follow-up to the deliciousness of the Psychic Stream Seeker Pua which we released a couple of years back. As the name suggests, Psychic Stream Seeker, we had already associated this type of tea with being a seeker of truth but not in such a kind of defined way. I began sourcing uh, this tea in late February just as Covid, the virus and the hysteria started to spread around the world and we were tasting Mao Cha's just as the UK started to go into lockdown. We selected the tea according to our knowledge of the effects of roasting, so looking for a tea which had a lot of punch um, because the roasting smooths out that punch. So we wanted a tea with a lot of punch and we found this great Gushu tea from Dahe Shan. We knew from experience that we needed a very tightly compressed cake in order to get an even roast and so rather than press it into a round cake uh, which would be very difficult to break we decided to use this chocolate bar shape with easily breakable pieces. We purchased um, all of the tea which actually was only 30 kilos so we couldn't make more of this tea unfortunately uh, and found a factory to press it to our specifications in this uh, chocolate cake format and then we purchased a specially sourced oven, tea roasting oven from China because we wanted to ensure a very accurate roast and this was shipped to us, quite a big oven was shipped to us. Now we had to focus on the artwork so uh, at this time it was April so much of the world was in lockdown and I was becoming angry, incensed more is the word, by the awful way that Covid was being handled by the media, the politicians and the experts. I saw corporate power grabs, manipulation of messaging and a criminal lack of leadership around the world which would lead to many more deaths than necessary. 
and the long-term decimation of our rights and our economic future for generations to come. So I was quite angry, but uh, I saw this fracture in society sort of spiraling out of control and confusion as people were forced to pick sides. So the idea of the fractal as a symbol of truth started to form in my plans. Much of the tea community was in lockdown and I predicted that the lockdowns could not end this year because that you can't just stop a virus by isolating yourself. So I thought it would be a fun diversion from the offline and online drudgery. So instead of seeing all of the same four walls and the same websites, I thought it would be fun if we all shared a virtual journey together. So I started to see what kind of treasure hunts had already been done using Google Maps, but I could not find anything particularly interesting. And the challenge was to try to get everyone to the same square meter on Google Map through clues. But how would they get that clue? So after a lot of thought, a lot of thought and a lot of research, I decided to use social media hooks to secretly reveal access to clues. In this way, I could time the release of the hooks to give the game some sort of longevity and, as la and allow as many people as possible to uh, join the game, to take part in the game. I worked on the game dynamics and when I felt that it was theoretically possible to make this happen, I started to choose locations on Google Maps. I wanted the locations to be personal. I knew that I wanted a complete circumnavigation of the globe, starting and ending in London. That felt right to me. And I spent many, many, many late night hours walking the streets of Google Maps to try to choose clues. And they started to form from about 10 clues. I narrowed it down to five. The difficulty was the sixth and final clue because I felt that it would be nice if I could give it a personal touch, if the last clue somehow involved us in some way. We wanted to give the gamer the surprise of seeing our faces when finding that last answer. Plus we needed to reveal the ostrich so that it would all tie together with the cake. At this time it was summer in London and I had a 360 degree camera that was sitting um, on my shelves that I'd purchased at, on a whim previously. So we decided to head to a place which me meant a lot to us, uh, means a lot to us, Regent's Park Rose Garden. Um, this is just a stone's throw away from the first clue on Primrose Hill. So I thought it would complete the circle perfectly. Hey everybody, we are here in July beautiful sunny day here with Aya. You've got food on your face, Aya. Yeah, she had avocado. <laughs> We're here to set the final clue. The final, the final hunt ends here in the Rose Garden in Regent's Park, where Aya is going to be revealing that the animal of our next poor cake is this little one here. Oh, she's happy. It's her new toy. Obviously, we just got it when we realized what the animal was going to be and that we were going to plant this final clue. You're very happy, aren't you? You've got your, your ostrich. We still don't have a name for it yet. We still don't have a name for the cake either. So mm -hmm. we're doing all of this in advance. You're not going to see this until December time. That's um, why it's so, so sunny That's right why now. it's so sunny and we've all got <laughs> locked down here. Should we go and find where we're going to plant you so that you can look all beautiful with food on your face? holding the ostrich. Yeah, let's do that. Come on. So we're in the rose garden. As I said, this will be coming out in December. So all of these roses will be cut back, but they're not quite in the height of their bloom because, you know, it really is mid June that they're in the height of their bloom and we're in mid July, but still a lovely aroma coming in through the air. So where are we going to put Aya? Where are we going to put her? What about if she's next to that statue? Let's check out that statue. Because she's kind of, she could be doing a similar pose. Oh yeah, make out the water do a pose. I don't think that's going to work. That's like dab. Yeah. Dab. <laughs> dab. <laughs> Could check out more further down, but I guess no. we're gonna keep it or we could do it over there on that island. Ooh, let's check that out. I mean, it's a very special place for me that that's true because my father used to yeah. spend used a lot of time everything. thinking and sitting in that on that island. That's true. Let's check it. Oh, let's check it out. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Oh. 
Okay, then let me get my uh, 360 cam out. Oh, right there. No, it's too close to a big drop into water. Oh, is it? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Whoops. All right, picture taken. We now need to upload it to Google Maps and we'll see if this all works out. After uploading those photos to Google, we waited for those blue dots, the photospheres to appear and they just didn't appear. Weeks went by and they, they just weren't appearing and I started to freak out a little bit. So I started to do some research and I discovered that the 360 camera, which I had previously purchased, was not high enough resolution for the requirements of Google Maps. So we had to take pictures again and I realized that my phone actually met the requirements. So we decided to take the pictures again, but Instead, we decided to head to a different part of London, an equally special place for us, Hampstead Heath. Okay, so we're here in the Heath, the beautiful Heath. We're in Wildwood Road, and this area is definitely, isn't it? It's a place we go a lot. We filmed, oh, we filmed the Young Gushu 2017 video here. We filmed yeah. Pendulum Meddler here. Yeah. We've done some sort of, uh, we've done announcements for uh, live sessions here. Yeah. This is this is our go-to part of the heath, just because it's really wild, Wildwood Road, and it's uh, and it's just yeah, it's just got a lot of atmosphere. So we're going to find a starting point, and we're going to we're going to see if we can figure out a way to create a little pathway through the heath for all of you treasure hunters to follow. Yeah, that pathway yeah, can nice. go up. They yeah. can go. Okay, so we're going to go up this pathway. Yeah, you can see. That's the pathway, so we need to shoot our first shot here. Cool. All right, let's set up. So we've been taking snaps, 360 snaps, and we're trying to work out where is going to be the position where we make the final clue. Celine's over there searching. What do you think? What do you think? There. Okay, so we'll take one more picture here and then over there. All right. All right, so here we are. I think that this is going to be the final position. We're going to have a session here. So let's take this final shot. Okay, hopefully this time Google Maps does not reject our images. Hopefully it works. Hopefully it works. Do you think it's going to work, little one? Do you think it's going to work? Yeah, it's going to work. And we're going to have some winners. The plan was to take a series of pictures of Celine and Ayana, so that would form a sort of path that you would follow, starting at Wildwood Road and then following the path to eventually find us drinking tea with the ostrich. We took all of the pictures, uploaded them directly from the location, so we were uploading them from Hampstead Heath, and then we left. But again, the blue dots did not appear. And so I started to research more and I started to see errors appearing. Google Maps, for some unknown reason, were rejecting the images. So we had to race all the way back to the same location before sunset to take more pictures. Unbelievably. My goodness. Google has rejected our pictures. Our luck is just So not we're there. rushing back <laughs> to take another picture. There's not going to be any tea set up because we had our tea. Yeah. We're going to have to run back before the sun sets and before she gets in a bad mood. It's her, um, it's her bedtime. It's her bedtime. <laughs> Thanks Google. Yeah. Um, so we're going to take another picture. So we grabbed as many pictures as possible with the ostrich to try to make sure that we had at least one picture on Google Maps with that ostrich. Uh, thankfully, some of them were accepted by Google, but frustratingly, again, none of the blue dots appeared on the map. So the pictures were there, but they were hidden. They weren't being shown by these blue dots. My initial plan was to somehow bring the players to the entrance of the heath at Wildwood Road. This is actually the reason why we called our Gushu Black Tea Wildwood Black, because I thought that I would use it some way in the clue. But all that we could do was wait to see if Google would eventually mark the map with those blue dots for our pictures. 
In the meantime, we had to work on other things. So we had to work on the artwork and I started to work on the fractal design. I knew that it would not be possible to design an actual fractal, but I wanted a repeating pattern and I wanted to use a five sided figure like a pentagon to represent the five elements which interact with each other in nature, earth, wood, metal, water, and fire. The fractal had to be a shape which could be split also into five parts to cover the first five fractals, which could be found during the game and would make up the whole on completion of the safari. So I came up with the fractal and next up I began to work on the game design, so how it appeared on the website. I had many meetings with our development team to build this game for us. I gave them my designs and the game dynamics and we discussed improvements and then they set about working on building it for the website. Meanwhile, those blue dots were not appearing on the map and so the pictures were hidden. So it was clear that I had to come up with another plan. How could I get everyone to virtually go to an obscure place in the middle of a forest without just giving them the location? Late one night, I came up with a coordinates idea. So if I could provide you with most of the coordinates as part of the first five fractals, and then I could reveal at a particular point in time a coordinate build which would bring you to that exact location only if you had found the first five fractals, then that could work. So we put numbers on all of the fractals and we worked out that the order for entering the coordinates had to offer a little challenge. And so I decided to thread the numbers along an east-west journey around the globe in order to figure out the order. My development team worked hard on the idea and managed to make it happen. In the meantime, Celine was working on drawing an ostrich that looked like it had discovered truth, that it pulled its head out of the sound and it had gone on this long safari and found the truth fractal. And we used the same location in the background as Psychic Stream Seeker. So somewhere resembling Joshua Tree, which has a lot of significance for us. We decided to purchase some simple black envelopes for the cake and had labels printed up uh, for us. And we wanted also a limited edition postcard to be included in the cake so that it could be kept after the tea had been finished as a reminder of this crazy year and of the fractal safari. So I wanted this fractal to be painted in or printed in metallic ink. So I had to go search for printers that could do that. Eventually we managed to find the printer and we got everything printed up. Next up was testing and trying to gauge the difficulty level of the game. I really did not want the game to be too easy. It needed to be easy enough to involve as many people as possible, but hard enough to be engaging, challenging, and most importantly, absorbing and satisfying when you get the answers. We didn't want to reveal any of the answers to the Mayleaf crew because we were worried that the answers would somehow get out there and ruin the whole experience. So I kept it very, very tight, the group, and I first tested the safari with Celine and then those involved in the development. In total, four people tested the game and they all actually found it really difficult. I had so many texts saying, it's impossible, it's impossible, it's impossible. And it became clear that I had to give very clear instructions on how to play the game and try to guide people as much as possible. So I shot that launch and instructional video and we finally launched the competition about seven months after I had started working on it. It was a very special moment for us to see the community engage with the game so enthusiastically. I'd planned all of our clue drops to tie in with other tea releases and so that when you got the fractal you would get discount rewards for finding those fractals and advance access. But we never expected that before even the first clue drop hundreds of people got all of the fractals, all of the first five fractals, um, just by guessing locations. Uh, the tea community never fails to impress us <laughs> in their ingenuity. So we found ourselves actually shipping out teas uh, up to a month before their actual launch. By this time, the cakes had arrived in London and it was time to roast. Unfortunately, the special roaster which I had purchased had become damaged during shipping and was not distributing heat evenly. So it was a real headache and took a lot of time speaking to the manufacturers. Um, and finally, after a, a couple of weeks of back and forth, I managed to tinker with the fans in the oven and fix it and managed to get it to work. So we began our test roasts. Well, I first wanted to um, test it out on another tea. And so we purchased in a special 
special Tieguan Yin, which I really liked, but I felt would benefit for some, from some roasting. And that eventually became our delicious Sheeping cereal. Next up, we had to dial in our parameters for the actual Fractal Fate Finder. We had already gained a fair amount of experience roasting the Psychic Stream Seeker. And thankfully, uh, we only had to go through about a kilo of the actual uh, Fractal Fate Finder Gushu to, to get the perfect roast. Still quite a lot to go, to go through, but we managed to, to get it, perfect the roast, dial it in so that it was bold, punchy, but smooth. So now it was the time to put it all together. We purchased some specially textured paper for wrapping the cakes and began roasting all of the cakes in my studio. My mother actually joined in and kindly volunteered to wrap each cake herself, which was very, very kind of her and uh, she put a lot of love into making these cakes for you. Eventually we had all 295 cakes ready and we were all counting down for the final clue drop. And as the countdown approached zero, I started to get very nervous. So here we are after nearly 10 months of uh, planning, preparation, we are now 36 minutes away from the final fractal clue drop. I am super excited. Social media is, uh, is getting buzzed. I can see a lot of posts out there with people getting hyped. You know, our aim with all of this is not to cause st too much stress, but to give excitement. So hopefully it's not stressing you out if you're taking part too much um, and you're finding it an exciting uh, little game to end off the year. So obviously at this time, I'm freaking out a little bit because there's a lot of technical things that need to go right um, at exactly you know, to the second when that hits zero, the clue needs to reveal itself. Um, the, um, the answer question format, which has been tested, obviously needs to, needs to um, act properly. Um, and I hope that we're going to start to see some medal winners pop up. So then I know I can breathe a sigh of relief that um, the, the game is working as it should be. Uh, we can test, you can always test, you can test, 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 but what we have learned um, to our detriment many, many times is you can never do enough testing and there's always something hidden around, a little bug that hides, um, that um, only shows itself when everything is live because when you're doing testing, obviously you're, you're, you're doing it in a controlled environment um, so that it's not public, but suddenly it's out in the public um, and things, technical things can go wrong. That's happened many times to us before um, and uh, hopefully this is not one of those times, especially considering that it's everyone's looking for that exact second when it drops, uh, the clue drops. So whew, I'm a bit nervous. Uh, I hope everyone else out there is okay and we'll be back in half an hour for the final few seconds. So I've just seen, this is, this is mad, that the place where the final clue is on Google Maps that we've been waiting for, you know, for three months, four months, um, for there to be uh, a, a blue dot. And we had to arrange all of our competition around the fact that there were no blue dots there. Um, now, <laughs> a couple of blue dots have appeared with uh, Celine, but they are not the blue dots with the answers. Um, but they have Celine and Aya in the picture. So that's going to... I think add a whole other level of difficulty because people are going to naturally think that that is those must be the places where the clues are as opposed to when there were no dots there you had to just sort of mess around and drop it uh, in places so that's another level of complexity that we weren't um, foreseeing but you know we can't do anything about that Google has suddenly decided to approve two of our pictures to, to put those blue dots there um, but uh, I have faith in the T head community you're gonna you're gonna experiment and uh, hopefully with the clue saying drop around the pin hopefully you will find the answer okay two minutes to go just under so I now need to send off this newsletter to make sure that we get a reminder out there for people who follow us with our newsletter. So that's now ready to go. Uh, we've got an Instagram post, a Facebook post, a Twitter post. I believe it's all scheduled to drop around the same time. Um, but right now, most important thing, you can see we've got four award winners for this Fractal Finder. Um, they're all sort of test people apart from one, which we'll talk about a bit later. Um, but so basically, Hopefully, we're going to start to see that number go up as soon as that clue drops or within, 
you know, a few minutes of that clue dropping. If I start to see that middle number go up, then I can start, I'm literally sweaty palms here. Um, <laughs> then I can breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief because then I know that the medals are being awarded properly, the question is being answered properly. And everything's working, we've got 55 seconds to go. It is um, a strange feeling when you're launching something public. Um, it's always that way, sort of around, you know, when we launched our website and when we launched uh, like big sales or big events, um, there's always this fear that it's not gonna quite work, but whew, breathe, stay calm. Whatever will be, will be. 30 seconds to go. I can imagine around the world, this is what gives me such joy is I'm sitting in my room here in my office, but I can imagine around the world, there are tea heads all staring at the same countdown, ready to go. Here we are, we've got 15 seconds. And the countdown, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, please reveal, please reveal the question, please, yes, yes, the question has been revealed, it's public, it's out, <sighs> okay, so first step done, the question has been revealed, I can imagine that there's a lot of frantic activity going on out there. I can breathe a little bit easier because that was my biggest concern. We have tested like crazy the, uh, the, the question answer. So I'd be amazed if we don't get any. It's a question of how quickly people uh, get to the answer. In fact, you know what? Let me start a stopwatch just so that I can uh, see it. All right, we're doing a stopwatch, so it's about 30 seconds late, that stopwatch. People are now searching for the fractal. I'm not going to disturb anybody. We've got um, our IT people uh, uh, who are sort of watching as well, but we're not going not to um, talk to them right now. I have just completed all my post-launch checklist. You can see we've got a very, very long checklist of all the things that we needed to do so that's now complete so i can close that that is working do we have any winners yet still no so i need to i need to see some names pop up here that will make me feel a lot calmer just one name means it's it's working all right fair enough it's taking some time that's understandable like i said those two blue dots um, that suddenly appeared is not going to make things easier, but hopefully if people read the clue, they've got to drop around the pin and maybe, you know, try to ignore the red herrings out there, which were not set up by us, even though people will think that they were. Um, let's see. Yes. Yes. Natasha. Natasha. First one in at about two minutes in. First one in. Well done, Natasha. Thank you, Natasha. I can now calm down because clearly the Q&A is working. The clue is working. You have found the animal. Whew, okay, all good. Now I can just wait and see how long it takes for us to get the first 10. Any more? Still no more. Still only Natasha. And I have to say there was one client who managed to just do some craziness to get there ahead of everybody else. But we'll talk about that, as I said, a bit later. I'm actually really happy that it's taking, you know, it's two and a half minutes, that's three minutes total, that it's taking some time because I didn't want to make it too easy. We've got another one, Harry, Harry's in, Harry's in, Natasha, Harry, and we had Beth as well, uh, Beth and Conrad. So we've got three, three winners of the cake. Well done, Harry. <laughs> This is exciting. Oh yes, Amir is in and Alba is in. There you go. They're all popping in now. Good, everyone's found that animal. I can breathe a sigh of relief. I can now just watch things roll here and uh, hopefully no bugs will present themselves and I will be ready for the unveiling and the selection of these winners come our Christmas video. 
So as I said, there was actually one client who managed to complete the fractal safari before the countdown reached zero. Her name is Beth, or at least it is on Instagram, and her partner Conrad. And they managed to beat the system through some uh, incredible guesswork. They managed to guess that the numbers on the fractals were coordinates, managed to guess that London would be the final location for the final clue, uh, managed to guess that they were to take the first number of the coordinate for London, and then managed to guess the order of all of the other coordinates and the formatting in order to access the final location. When I found out, uh, we went into a bit of a panic. We thought we might have been hacked, and we spoke to I spoke to the dev team, and we worked out that it was just with sheer determination and persistence that she managed to find the answer. So we had to make her a winner and congratulations, that was pretty impressive. So here we are present day, we've had over 550 people complete the Fractal Safari, plenty more people took part, but over 550 people completed it. Thank you to all of you who took part. Now this poor cake is winging its way to tea heads across the globe. Rather fittingly, it is now traveling around the world. There were other hiccups along the way, which I'm not gonna go into. That's all part and parcel of these kinds of uh, launches and these kinds of games. Uh, but I wanted to give you some insight into the behind the scenes activity to make this tea and the competition. Clearly, this tea is not going to break even financially for us, given all of the work and investment we've put into it. But it gives us so much satisfaction to see such a response from the community. And it is our genuine hope that the tea will provide plenty of deep meditative sessions to explore truth and perspective for a brighter future. That's it, Tea Heads. Check out our other videos, taste our teas wherever you are in the world by browsing mayleaf.com and come visit us if you're ever in London. Other than that, I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.